It's been several years since I've tested G-Data. Although I have been talking about this product quite a bit, it has slipped my attention when it comes to reviews, but now it's 2017 and it's high time for the full review of G-Data Internet Security. Most of it is pretty much identical to the way I saw it last time, and that was a long time ago. They do have keylogger and exploit protection now, if we go into settings, we can do more with our AV. And they actually have a really nice slider so you can tune your security and performance based on your priorities. They also have a USB keyboard guard, which I guess prevents snooping or key logging. The firewall and antivirus settings are also easy to deal with and they have an autopilot mode. Kind of reminds me of Bitdefender again. And they still keep an anti-spam module for those of you who like using email clients on your desktop. For the antivirus itself, you can choose whether to use both engines or just one, and you can decide what to do with your infected files. They also have an anti-ransomware module and a behavior monitor. I'm going to leave everything turned on just as default, and we'll get started with the test. So we'll do a short link test before moving on to the files. We have five malicious URLs that I grabbed just minutes before. Let's see what GData can do about it. The first one is blocked easily. It's the website protection module. The second one's also blocked. So is the third. Alright, so the link test is done. This was easy. Now we'll move to the actual meat of the test. Before that, I will have to turn off the shields, and I will also show you that the software is fully up to date. Now, for this video, we have an interesting mix of malware. There are 300 items, which you may not think is very high, but this pack does contain a very high concentration of ransomware. Most of these were collected either today or yesterday, so I think it will be interesting to see how GData performs. The scan speed seems to be really good. The interface appears unchanged, once again. Alright, so it seems the scan is done. That was indeed fast. I'm going to try to select all of these and choose the action to delete because we don't want to disinfect our files. Now let's see how long this takes. The removal process took a fairly long time, which at first was surprising given the fact that I chose the delete option. But it turns out GData doesn't just delete your entire files. Isn't that a surprise? So it turns out a lot of these files were Verloc infections and there was malicious code around an actual legitimate file and uh, GData removed the malicious part leaving behind the original files. Which means we can listen to Beethoven for the rest of this video. If I were a viewer, I would be doing an instant like just for this. Right, so before I get carried away, let's do the detection ratio calculation. We'll have to remove all of these files before we can do that. So it turns out only three malware files are left. And I've already done the math. That translates to a detection ratio of exactly 99% which I guess is uh, top tier, as expected, from a dual engine product. Now it will be interesting to see what happens when we try to execute these remaining three files. I'm going to turn on all their shields again. And here goes nothing. I saw the Windows fault check error module or something like that load up for a moment. So I've executed all three of these files, and at this point all I can do is wait and see what's happening. I'm not seeing any action so far. It is possible that these files didn't do anything, but 
I will let the system run for a few minutes regardless, then we'll reboot and do our second opinion scans as we always do, and we'll see if anything actually managed to get through. Our second opinion scanners are done, so it's time to take a look at the final results. Zamana didn't find anything. Malwarebytes did find a registry key change, nothing major, I guess. But Hitman Pro has detected an active file, which it classifies as a Trojan. This is a Kaspersky detection, and it's detected as Trojan Win32 Snowjan. It's not even an executable, it's a data.cff file, so I did a little bit of digging around. And it's quite interesting, really. So I located the file itself, it's under app data roaming, and it's a 137 kilobyte CFF file, but if I try to delete it, it says that the file is active in host process for Windows services. So that definitely seems a little bit fishy. Then I went ahead and uploaded it to VarsTotal, and, and seems to have a detection ratio of 25 out of 56 engines. It's not detected by Bitdefender, and therefore a lot of the other products that use their engine. However, Avira, Avast, Kaspersky, a lot of these are picking it up. Maybe benign, maybe not. I cannot make that judgment. It's all up to you guys. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and share if you did. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.